Hello, guys. Welcome to another episode of Xa Talk Show. So today is 2022, March 16th, San Francisco time. It's noon. So I'm going to do random today. So it's random chat, random、uh, live stream, and mostly I'm just going to code. Uh, working on my website, so you are going to see Emacs workflow. So my Emacs workflow. So you can,、um, you know, if th- those of you who watch my videos, you know、uh, what is this about. So you know. So okay. So if you have questions, comment, just post it now. Okay, post you know, ran- like random. So today is random. So I'm just going to work on my、uh, Emacs website. So the first thing is you see there's a lot of photos here, you see tons of photos, and I can press a key. Let me show you the command. Press a key to um. Start direct open in infra view. iPhone view. iPhone view is a classic, uh, image viewer. So let me show you. Okay, so th- um. So this is iPhone view. Okay, let's uh cancel it. Let's view it, so you can see a bunch of images. And、uh, okay, you can you probably cannot see all of it because part of it is hidden. Yeah. Okay, so let's change infra view. So infra view is a classic Windows application for viewing images. It was the best one throughout nineteen nineties and two thousands. Today it's not so it's not that great because you know the user interface changed and they are sticking with. Kind of '90s in interface in '1990s Windows API. So, for example, all these fonts are too small to to see. But anyway, so let's.、Uh, I need to fix something so the images are always in the center. So first of all, video check, audio check. Yes, good. Okay, so iPhone view. You want to make the image in the center. So where do you? Um, put Windows in middle of the screen. Okay, so there. So now I can switch. Yeah. So I can. So you know, usually every three hours I walk around for half an hour with my tablet, Windows Surface tablet, and I take notes. So these are the things I need to do. For example, the Wolfman. For example, if you go to my website, and you can see, you know. Uh, programming language t- tutorials and this Wolfram language, and I was thinking of creating a new logo for、uh, Wolfram language. Now watch my Wolfram language、uh, videos. Okay, it's free. You can download it free. It's and and it's the best language. So, so I take notes. These are the things I need to do, and you know, create a new logo for that. That's one thing. And this is my JavaScript tutorial. Uh, these things I need to work on、uh, JavaScript symbols, which is a new feature around two thousand sixteen or two thousand fifteen. I still haven't worked on that page JavaScript in depth. That's this tutorial, okay? And、uh, a bunch of other things. You know, I'm doing my live stream, and sometimes I need to change the title. You know, take notes for myself. So, but. Let's get on to some of the things I need to do. Actually, so you know, let's start to do them. Okay, so Emacs tutorial. So if you go to my Emacs tutorial, you know, recently I did kind of a little bit slight reorganization of the topic box, topic pages, table of contents. So it used to be there is a link to the Emacs Lisp tutorials all at the top, but now. I rely on the back to you know the red button, the back to、uh, table of contents.、Uh, so, but okay. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. So copy the URL, switch to Emacs. I want so I want a topic box. So you can see. Let me let me explain. Okay. So you can see here's the table of contents. You know there are several main entry points for my Emacs tutorial. And、uh, the most important are these seven of them. So there's two sections: the Emacs tutorial. So let's magnify.、Uh, okay. And by the way, I'm using the new keyboard.、Um, God, yeah, I'm using a new keyboard, so I'm not too familiar with the setup yet. I 
reviewed this keyboard yesterday, you know, in my previous video. You can find it on my keyboard blog. This is Keymove DK61, K-E-M-O-V-E. -E. You know, watch my uh, video before today. So, so you, ha you can see here is the main entry points. There's uh, two major sections. One is Emacs tutorial and one is Emac Lisp tutorial. So in the Emacs tutorial section, you have the basic generic tutorial. And if you go there, click one of them, you see the current page will highlight in green. Okay, so go back, go back. So that's the Emacs tutorial into the set three sections, Gen generic tutorial, Emacs init, or about initialization. Let's magnify. Then uh, Emacs keys, okay. Uh, let's see, did the magnification work? No, Jesus. Okay, let's set up the magnification so it's always magnified. So Firefox settings, uh, general, you know, each browser, their settings becomes diversifies, diversified. Each browser sports their own uh, settings so it's you know usually you have to spend hours uh, to get the setting correct okay zoom default zoom let's say 110 okay uh, my close key doesn't even work okay so so emacs tutorial section three major subsections tutorial E Emacs in it and Emacs keys, all about Emacs keys. So you can watch my video there. Then there's Emacs Lisp section, generic tutorial, practical Emacs Lisp introduction. Then uh, Emacs Lisp examples, where you can see sample code. You know, all these sections is, is sample code of Emacs Lisp. Uh, you can see each one of them do something useful. Uh, then there is Emacs Lisp Advanced. In this section, you learn about more fundamental um, uh, aspects, technical details of Emacs Lisp, the language, such as const pair, list, what's the difference between list and vector, and sequence types. You know, how do you map, how do you go through a sequence type, list or vector, throw and catch, you know, technical details of Emacs Lisp, Emacs Lisp Advanced. Then you have a more advanced section about how to write a Emacs Lisp major mod. So if you read this, you can write a major mod uh, in an hour. So there is the table of contents, you see. So right now I rely on, you know, once you are on any particular page, for example, this page, Emacs Lisp Advanced Association List, which is a Particular, particular data structure uh, in Emacs Lisp. So anytime you are in a particular page, you right now you rely on clicking on the uh, back to Emacs tutorial homepage, you know, to get to the top table of contents. What I want to do is I want to create a, a topic box. Let me just do it, okay? So, so let me just do it. Copy the URL, switch back to Emacs, open that page, yeah. Um, okay, open that page. So now we copy this, uh, wait, so copy this, show the pink window. Okay, so actually, uh, close that. Yeah, so copy this list and uh, go to one of them here and uh, here. And if I just view in browser, yeah, uh, uh, view in browser, that's this page, okay? Now I want to topic that gives me the topic box and pastes these links. Okay, so if you view in browser now, 
it looks like that okay which is not what we want so go back here and uh, so I'm gonna show you what's going on okay so delete that delete that Let's say XA Emacs tutorial. Then change the H4 to H3. Uh, you know, I'm not familiar with my keys here. So what's the key? I'm not familiar with this keyboard. So change bracket pair uh, okay so not here so that's change current tag okay f9 uc i'm using vora keyboard so f9 uc so h3 now you can see the title uh wait uh you see h3 uh okay three is over here so now you can see the title is now h3 then move this in inside paste paste okay now view in browser you see fantastic so you got the table of contents you know instead of going back to the top you can just directly conveniently switch to different major topics oh not found ah jesus okay so because they are in a different directory so the directories are wrong so the file path is wrong here so you need to actually so let's fix them uh, actually let's let me show you okay so yeah let's just fix them Yeah, so copy that, replace, you know, this is 60% keyboard, so you don't have arrow keys. Whenever I need to press arrow keys, I need to hold down, hold down function key, a pain in the ass. 60% keyboards are a pain in the ass, okay? Now done, show in browser fantastic you can see now i can switch to different topics emacs init emacs keys practical emac lisp okay now i need to put this navigation box into each one of the main topic okay so press a key to cut it undo now let's just go to this page and uh, search for main search okay and paste it there showing browser there it is okay now go back to emacs so let me copy it and do you can see all my command calls in the pink window yeah so let's just do it Okay, now showing browser. Now I click on Emacs init. Uh, this is not the box. Uh, Something is wrong. Let's see Emacs keys. Ah, God, I did it wrong. So the topic box is somehow. going on oh whoa I forgot shit so actually I need to copy 
this part f6 so let's fix them Okay, now show in browser. Try Emacs in it, fantastic. Try Emacs keys, fantastic. Okay, it's here. Uh, and try Emacs practical Emacs Lisp there. Try Emacs Lisp examples there. Emacs Lisp advanced there. And uh, how to write the Emacs Lisp major mark. So you see, that's done. Thank you for 666 of Flamio. Fantastic pine, pine, pine apple today. Fantastic, thank you. So, any questions? You know, you, when you pay, ching ching, you got to ask a question. So, essentially, that's what I'm doing. Uh, that's what I want to do, okay? It's probably confusing to you because you don't know what I'm doing. You know, you just see a bunch of key presses. So, maybe. Maybe I should explain, maybe, um, you know, because I'm using stuff like keys. So maybe I can explain some, some of it. Yeah, but I got lots of other things to do. Um, so you see that Lisp logo is should be at the bottom, you see. So there is a, a CSS issue. Uh, well, that, that that happens because this is an inline block. Okay, we don't want a inline block. Okay, so the easiest way to fix that is to add a dive. Okay, then view in browser. There it is. CSS, you know, check out my tutorial. I have a CSS tutorial. So anyway, so how did I do this? Okay, let's try this again. Okay, on this page, this box probably should be at the top. Um, I don't know, you know, so this is a design decision. You know, so this topic box allows you to switch to different major topics, you see. Emacs Lisp examples, Emacs Lisp advanced, Emacs Lisp how to. You know, ideally, you see, ideally, Let's see, Emacs tutorial, Emacs init, Emacs keys, okay? Emacs tutorial. Ideally, the box should be, should stay put. So it doesn't matter which page you are, they stay in the same position. So if we want to do that, we need to have this topic box always at the top. However, that violates another principle. Another, the other principle is that whenever I have, I have this topic box, you see, these topics, Excel, that should be at the bottom of the page. Um, so, you know, when you design, there's lots of conflicting um, issues. So in this case, I think it, sh it makes sense to have them at the top, at the same position, Emacs keys. So let's do that. So Emacs keys, let's fix it. Let's go here. Cut it, move it to the top, and view in browser. You see now it's at the top. Uh, yeah, but you know the design issues. So that's a detail. So let's fix some of the others. So Emacs advanced and how to write a major mod. Okay, so let's also move this uh, to the box to the top. Cut. Paste. 
Okay, so now it's you see all the topics box should be at the top. You see now it's kind of, um, yeah, except the intro sentence. You see there's an intro sen sentence there that design issues. So I'm not sure what to do about that. I have to think about so think about that. So there's a lot of design issues. So. So let's see what's the comments. Hey, Rokusa, sorry if this is off, off topic. What is your thoughts on ligatures and do they contradict GNU Emacs ASCII philosophy? I talked about that many times, like major topic in past year about font and ligatures. Uh, I suppose you are not trolling. Because that is the, ligatures is the one of the most idiotic thing that is obsessed, obsessed by the hacker type of programmers, by programmers, you know, by programmers. They, it's, they have an obsession about, about ligature and about font. And that's the worst, the most idiotic fuck possible. I talked about that for several videos for one hour, you know, so uh, go check out my videos in 2021 or 2020. Uh, okay, for, for example, let, let, me, let me just show you, okay, so you go to ksali.org, yeah, actually just search for ksali ligature, okay, you can probably find Unicode ligatures, Unicode Latin, uh, my Twitter post, you know, there it is, one article, okay, the modernities of typography, but how, however, this is someone else stole my website, you know, content into their, you know, lots of these there, the moronicities of typography, hyphen dash quotation marks. So you click on that to open, switch to it, the moronicities of typography, hyphen dash quotation marks apostrophe. So in this article, I also talk about GNU um, convention for quotes. Uh, this article does not talk about ligatures, but, but, but here at the bottom, there's the related articles box. So you can see the tech pestilence related issue. Okay. That's another nerd, you know, Unix hacker obsession. Intro to ch Chinese punctuation, then English, English phonetics, uh, good article. Di then you have article on diacritics. Trema, omelot, marquum, 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 circumflex, you know, all these diacritics. What, you know, what's their purpose, their origin, you know, their name, you know, these Unicode characters, and matching brackets in Unicode, and uh, English writing style, Oxford comma, you know, that's, um, that's kind of a mean, uh, you know, about grammar. Uh, typography as high art, you know, typography is the most idiotic thing, which is obsession of Donald Gnuth, uh, idiotic obsession. So I, I talked about several hours for, on these topics in the past, but however, I haven't found the main um, topic. So let me go to find it. Okay, for, so first of all, copy the URL, go to talk page and paste in what we talked about today. Okay, so uh, we have a record. So you, you go to my top of my website, Ksali web, then you click on Ksali info. Uh, just about any topic, you can just search for my name and whatever the word, you'll find my opinions on it. So Ksali code, Ksali code, then you go down, then you go down, then you go down to a bunch of essays then there is a section on CSS sucks, okay? Um, user interface design, okay? Let's go there because this is related to font, okay? Then you go down. You can see there is my video, Donald Gnuth, Steve Jobs, and the idiocy of typography, okay? I did several videos, so two of them are here. I did more than that. Actually, one of them is here, but um, 
the idiocy of typography and 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 ligatures, ligatures, the worst, the most worthless idiocy. You know what they are? They are like themes. You know themes in Emacs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like people, you know, the, especially the Malayan Gen and Zoomers, they, they have themes, they make them pretty. Okay, that's about that. So let me go back to do what I need to do, okay? So what are the questions? Do you, uh, do you know what virtual YouTubers are? No, I don't know what is virtual YouTuber. We'll probably buy a Kinesis Advantage to end of this month. Fantastic. Big fan of me, okay? Great, thank you. You know, I care. You know, I got lots of thanks, uh, which I appreciate. But the sad fact is that money, okay, you donate to me, money talks. Otherwise, you know, I get thanks all the time. Uh, doesn't do much to me. And I, you have practiced juggling. Have you been interested in card tricks? No, not really. I don't, not. You know, juggling and and uh, magic magician. Juggling and magic is usually tied together, though. You know, and this is also uh, one of the main interest in programming nerds. You know, you'll see a lot of programmers, nerd and nerds, nerd type of programmers, such as the Unix hackers. You know, the Unix philosophy, Linux type people. They they will juggle and they will often many of them will. Be interested in doing magic, you know, card tricks or handkerchief or lots of lots of. You can buy props, you know. I was, I was in that community when I was a teenager for ten years. But for me, I'm not. I I'm I'm. I was never interested in magic. I've seen a lot, you know. I've seen a lot of them, tons of them. Uh, but magic is not my thing. You know, some say, you know, let me talk about magic, okay? So, you know, so, according to these people, you know, some, you know, some, you know, the magicians, many of the best ones, they make tons of money. They are million, you know, hundred million heirs, billion, you know, maybe not billion, but they become very rich um, magicians, you know, and they, some, you know, so magic, you have the tight, small tricks like card tricks, handkerchief, disappear coins, and so on. Then you have like big, tricks usually those are called illusions illusionists illusionists you know for example they can cut people in half you know you, you see that and and there's modern ones you know young younger generation malayan gen zoomers on youtube you see you know chris something you know big name they make hundreds of millions of dollars so magic is to them according to them many of these fanatics magic fanatics they will say Magic ma and, and and many of the magicians are also into physics. Okay, so like math, physics, juggling, all kind of related. You know, so to the ma to the magic fanatics, they will say magic is truly magical because they are ca they are kind of understanding physics. They are kind of um um. You know, somehow related to phys physics, they, and also part also another topic very highly related is psychology, the ma manipulation of human mind. You know, in real time. You 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 know. So, and this is also related to con men. You know, which which is another topic I'm highly interested. So for the, for example, some people you know, they, and there are movies, Hollywood movies about magicians, about con men. You know, so I can talk to you. I can just say things and you'll, I'll earn your trust. You know, you'll believe what I say and I'll, yeah, I can manipulate them, uh, uh, man manipulate you. And then there's another topic of, about uh, hypnosis, um, hypnotics, you know, hypnosis. You know, basically you, I put you to sleep I, and then I can tell you what to do. That's usually crap, okay? So anyway, so magic you know all these are related topics so from juggling from computer com computer nerds to juggling to mathematicians to physicists you know then you have magicians then then it also ties to uh psychologist psychology and common and brainwashing real you know the, like kind of real time so um but uh so what's my point so i was going to say mag magicians yeah so uh, 
I'm not really interested in magicians. So you know, magi magi magics, magicians. So how do they work? They are two. They are two major things. The the two major elements on how magic works. Okay, either the small ones like disappearing a coin, like I can pop, I can create a coin out of your ear, you know, or or. You know, you know, like all card tricks. So that's small tricks. Then the, you have bigger tricks, illusions, like cut people in half or disappear a whole building. That that becomes very fake. That becomes a、uh, camera TV manipulation. <laughs> But people do that because then they become common. Because you you know they disappear a whole building. How is that possible? Well. <laughs> All magic, all magic is actually just fake in a sense, you know, because they are not, you know, they deceived you. That's you know because there's no real、uh, magic. Well, you know, if you talk, you know, so this the very fertile topic, you know, magic. So then you get into higher dimensions. Then then that's another possibility, you know, like multiverse and so on.、But、anyway. Practically speaking, all magics are just all magic is just fake. Okay, that that's reality. That's why they are some. It's in in some sense that's why they are interesting. It's fake, but they make it real. They you are, and it's it is fascinating because in magic tricks you see them you cannot figure out how it's done, you know. Um. So, but ultimately, magics. Magic are just fake, you know. So, and there are two major parts of how it works. Okay, one is just sleight of hand, sleight of hand. Okay, for example, I can, I can make a coin appear in your head. Well, how does that work? That's because I already hold, I already have the coin in my palm, you know. But somehow you didn't see it. You know, I just make you believe that a coin. Appeared from your ear, you know that's a very classic trick. The of course the trick is how you you have to practice it. You know magic magic is not easy. You have to practice practice just like programming. You know for 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 daily for hours a day for years. Then you can <laughs> then it works. So it's just fake. Okay, so part of it is just skill. Okay, skill of of your hand of your manipulation. You know. That's one part of it.、Um, the other part is psychology. Okay, psychology. So I can, you know, so this, so this become where interpersonal skill, those social type of people, you know, some of you maybe, but usually not nerds, not programmers, the social type of people who can talk smoothly, you know, sales people. They can they can do that well. You know, they they are more inclined to do that well. So. Psychology. So when I talk to you, I have to make you like me. You know, make you you know say whatever I want you to believe, and uh, uh, and evolving、uh, understanding psychology, many aspect of it,、uh, and draw your attention away, things like that.、Um, yeah, psych. Yeah. So that's the two ma major major、uh, components of. Magic, okay. Hand skills, you know, little skills, physical skills, and psycho psychological man manipulation, and some other things, you know, such as sometimes mathematics, a little bit mathematics, a little bit physics. For example, some magic tricks are just physics. For example, I can, I have a cup of water, you know, clear water. I pour another clear water into it, and it bec becomes blue. <laughs> How is that?、Uh, wow, wow, that's magical. How does that happen? Well, it's just physics, chemistry. You know, so in card tricks, there's some similar things. You know, I let you choose some cards. I put it in somewhere. Then eventually, that card is the number you 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 guessed. And some of the card tricks come down to math. So meaning that there's no magic at all. It just mathematically it works out that way. You know, so we get into mystery, mystery of、uh, mathematics. So anyway, and probability, and, and so anyway, so magic、uh, is not too interest. You know, I'm not really interested in magic. It's most you know fake. 
but I'm interested in psychology and brainwashing, uh, especially the grand scale type. Uh, and which you know, USA and all the politicians they are doing that in in Apple and big corporations. Anyway, so that's about magic. Okay, so that's kind of um, yeah, digression about magic. Did I miss, you know, that they, they, we had so many topics to go into, but I probably, I forgot, you know, so if you want me to talk about that, mention it and pay me. No framework, no more HTML. Also, okay, uh, also reading the source code on my own also answer the question. Okay, what is the question? Okay. Oh, I answered. Okay, so found it. Thank you so much. Uh, what is that about? Oh, yeah, ligatures. Okay, so hey there. I know the answer to virtual YouTuber question. Oh, virtual YouTubers. Oh, I haven't seen. Uh, I guess I know what I'm. What you are talking about? Like some computer generated, you know, YouTubers. Yeah. So I didn't know it's a thing. It's that that's interesting. Uh, and I don't think I'll love it. <laughs> the being a bio gay day. Okay, I don't know what what is that. Okay, so let's go back to Emacs thing. Uh, so now let's so. I want to work on the, my next thing. Ten people watching, comments and questions. Okay, keep them coming. So, topic box. This thing we have done. So, next thing. What's the next thing? Okay, uh, some web tutorial. We need a topics box again. Okay, now let me mention how did I work? How how did I just you know made all these topic box? Uh, where is it? Yeah, uh, really, it's gone somewhere. So, uh, so how did I uh, add them? Let me show you some some of the tricks. Um, no, let me let me push on. So let me push on. Okay, so I want to go to. Let me just do it. Okay, so you can see I have a tutorial JavaScript in depth. You go top, you go up a level. You can see a tutorial on HTML, on CSS, on JavaScript, on JavaScript reference, JavaScript object reference, uh, and uh, on JavaScript working on DOM and SVG. Okay, so these topics are all related. Because usually, if you study one of them, you will be highly interested in another, in the other. And usually, when you work, if you are a web dev, you know, usually you, uh, it's usually you want when you work on, you know, in web dev, you need to reference JavaScript, CSS, HTML all the time, cross reference. So I need just like the Emacs tutorial. I need a related topic box so you so one can easily navigate from one of these to the other without without clicking on the you know going back to the table of contents okay let's do that copy the url um open that okay so let's do that so i'm going um i'm going to do this quickly this time so HTTP protocol. So okay. So now I go to the HTML one, and uh, and uh, place them at the bottom. Okay. So I don't want at the top. So now I press the key to linkify this, and I type topic T to create a template for the topic box then i want to delete the previous uh, list okay and change the title change the title to web dev 
tutorials. Kazaa Web Dev Tutorials and uh, capitalize the title, then change the H4 to H3. So let's do that. H3. Uh, you know, on this keyboard, it's staggered. So I'm used to the orthogonal layout, but it's staggered. So now I'm, when I'm on staggered, I type whenever I want to type 3, I typed 4 instead. You know, staggered idiocy. So let's change the title to H3. Um, let's try again. So 3, okay. So you can see now it's 3. Then now I want to grab that block, okay. Now show in browser. No, got showing browser. There it is. That's what I want. I want this on all of these uh, pages. Okay, let's do it. Let's put it on top. Okay, so yeah, so copy that. Then go here. Uh, okay, so. here okay now showing browser fantastic HTML tutorial visual CSS tutorial JavaScript in depth, JavaScript object reference, DOM scripting tutorial, practical SVG tutorial. Okay. Uh, that's okay. So again, like I said before, I'm not satisfied with this design because when you have these, mm, you know, you, 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 the question is, should this box at the should this box at the top or at the bottom? You see, when it's at the top, it's great in the sense that you know the topic remains in one position. But however, it's kind of confusing because, for example, this page is practical SVG tutorial. So when people arrive at this page, they see the title, but then then they see something else. They see, you know, these are not SVG tutorials. These are just navigation box to somewhere else. Yeah, so, okay, so let me think. Let me make a, a design decision right now instead of working offline. Since I'm doing just random topic today, so let me just, um, Make, uh, I have to make a decision. So should the should the related thing at the top or at the bottom? Uh, this is especially when this box, when this navigation box is at the top, it's especially annoying for the CSS tutorial because the CSS tutorial, this page, the index page, the main entry page, is a bunch of you know it shows visualization of CSS. Uh, so on this page, if you have the navigation box at the top, it's it's kind of irrelevant. It's um, it's confusing to users who just come to this page. So this design issue. So let's, you know, let me dive into my, my process of how I arrive at design decisions for my website. Okay, let me give you a view of that bottom. So of, of Flamio is correct. You know, I agree with you. You're a good, you know, I agree with you. So if you have the box at the, at the top, the advantage is that when people navigate around, they will see, you know, they can remain in the same position, you know. But it's it's just, 
so that's an advantage. The disadvantage is that some entry page, some of the entry page, you know, they have actual content there. For example, why why do you need the actual content? For example, if I click on JavaScript in depth, you know, this is few hundred pages, you know, a giant chapter. I mean, a, giant, a book by itself, you know, few hundred pages. So when people arrive th at this page, they you need some kind of introduction, you know, like, you know, so I say this tutorial is better than Mozilla or any other JavaScript book in print. You know, that's my, that's my marketing, you know, that's my blurb. You know, when you have a physical book on the covers, usually they have a little blurb, you know, usually marketing, you know, they tell you why you should read this book, you know, what's the relevance, why should, you know, there are 10,000 books, why should you read this one? So, so that's, you know, the technical name for that little, little quote, that's called blurb. <laughs> that's literally, you know, if I have an article on the etymology of blurb, you know, it, literally that, the technical name for that book, um, you know, on the book cover, that's called a blurb. Uh, and so I have a blurb for my JavaScript tutorial, and it's essential, you need that. You know, because otherwise people come to my page, they, they don't know who I am. You know, they just see JavaScript in depth. Okay, who is this? You know, why should you, you know, you don't, you know. So you need some kind of introduction. So when people come to this page, if you have the, you know, this topic box at the top, that's irrelevant to this page, that's no good. Okay, so, okay, at the bottom then. I'm already used to the bars on wikis and they are at the bottom. On wikis, which wiki? Okay, let's move them to the bottom. Okay, let's do this. So now you can observe my workflow. So let's uh, visuals. Uh, okay, so visual base, uh, visual CSS go to the bottom. Let's put it here. So, okay, close. Yeah. Close. S what? Close. Copy that again. JavaScript in depth. Okay, delete that. Okay, put it here. Show in browser. Now there's another question. You know, should this by JavaScript be on top of this or below it? Uh, you know, so many design issues, okay? But that's, you know, for example, this page, JavaScript object reference. Um, yeah, so I'm not actually, so I'm not actually too sure about this box but even because even on this page it's a little bit disorienting disorientation because people come here you know they want JavaScript object reference so if you don't have this box then people will focus on the panel which is the actual table of contents you know you have uh, starting from here so but if you have the box, you know, people look at, people think this is the main content. Yeah, so you, yeah, so, so this is, uh, on the whole, this is, this is, um, this is a major problem about navigation panels. You know, I've been looking into this issue for the past 10 years and never arrived at a satisfactory point. Because if you go to other website, let me show you, okay? Uh, let, let, let's go to, let's see. If you go to some website, for example, uh, JavaScript, let's search for. Okay, so you go to the Mozilla's JavaScript uh, tutorial or reference, you know, you can see they also have a panel, you see, they also have a panel here. 
And you, if you go to uh, JavaScript Boolean on um, W3 Schools, which is kind of idiotic um, website, usually you have wrong, incorrect information. Uh, let's magnify, okay? So you can see they also have a navigation panel, okay? When you enlarge your window. So when you lots of website you know also wikipedia so basically you go through almost any website uh, on programming languages usually they have a site panel and y y if you look around they are all idiosyncratic there's no standard design so they are diverse in many different ways first of all the format is very different between web websites for example in the mozilla you have in this article, you know, they say in this article, then you have highlight in this particular way. Then you see, you click on constructors. Uh, God, they, you see, it's, let's see, instance methods. You see, it's very confusing. That, I mean, the, so each website, their navigation panel, are all very different and uh, in two aspects one is the formatting is all very different okay the other more important aspect is that the semantics like how should the navigation box be i mean what is it supposed to be is it for convenience of linking to different places or is it a sort of table of content or subsections to this page or is it table of content to the whole general book. So that's a different semantics. So, but if you look around all the websites, you know, on JavaScript, on PowerShell, you know, let's, let's see PowerShell. Get child item, let me show you a PowerShell one, okay? You know, when you when you don't have the JavaScript, they don't show the side panel. You see, again, it's very different depending on the website. On W3 School, if you don't have JavaScript, the panel shows, okay? On the Mozilla, if you don't have JavaScript, the panel also shows. You can see the panel, the navigation panel. But on the, for example, on the Microsoft PowerShell documentation, if you don't turn on JavaScript, it doesn't show panel. But if you turn on JavaScript, which is 99.9% .9 of people, then you see the panel, okay? So the design of this navigation box, there's no standard and it's extremely, I, I'll tell you, I'll emphasize this, extremely confusing. You know, so I have been thinking about designing my my own website's side panel. You know, I've been working on this for, for, for about, it began about 12 years ago, 2008 or so. And over the past 12 years, they went through several changes, you know, for my JavaScript, for my Emacs. Uh, let's go to Emacs. Uh, God, what is this? Uh, view browser okay viewing browser you can you can see my emacs blog they don't have a panel on the side it used to be like two years ago if you watch my video you'll see a panel now i, I removed it so what i'm saying is that over the past 12 years my site panel has went through like every four years it went through some change but i was never satisfied with with how it works and I have spent, you know, every, each time I spend a week, almost like 30 hours, full time 30 hours to study all the different issues. It, it just cannot arrive at the satisfactory design for the side panel. You see, part of the reason is that the side pa panel, the side panel is kind of an art beast. You know, because traditionally, if you read a book, if you have a book, printed book, the first few pages are table of contents, 
Okay, and at the end of the book is index, index bibliography, uh, epilogue,、um, several other things. You know. But tip, but the most too important thing is at the beginning of the book you have table of contents, which is a logic logical outline of the content of your book, okay. And at the end of the book is typically index, which is a bunch of keywords and which page they are on, okay. So table of contents and index, and these two are universal. So when it comes to a book. You know, such as my JavaScript tutorial, or you know, any programming language reference. You know, you can also try Python. You know,、uh, you have you know. So when you have a book, usually the two most important thing is table of contents and index, and these are standard, universal. But when it comes to web pages, it becomes a mess. Okay, when it comes to, for example, programming language reference. You are looking at PowerShell.、Uh, you are looking at Mozilla. You know JavaScript, Mozilla. Then you are looking at W three JavaScript on you know on JavaScript tutorial or reference, or you looking at PowerShell. In, there's no standard way to do that. Well, one way you can do that is you. So let me show you、uh, Emacs. Okay, Emacs list. Emacs list reference manual. Okay, so let's try to HTML、uh, one page per knot. Okay, so this so you are looking at the Emacs、um, list reference manual. Okay, now the、e、Emacs people are are old people, so they follow they follow the more traditional way. So now you are looking at table of contents Emacs list, and if you click on one of them. For example, Lisp data types. You see, there's no side panel. There's no fucking side panel. You see, and in this way, it's very simple. It's very simple. If you want to go to the table of contents, you go up there. You can overview of the table of contents. But if you are in a particular section, then you have a subsection. You know, table of contents for this section. But if you are in a particular page. You see, there's no side panel. Okay, so this this is a classic traditional design. The advantage is that it's very logical, simple, simple and logical. You can you can kind of always expect. You know, you have you have、um, predefined expectation. You know, you you know you know where to find things. But however. The disadvantage is that there's no site, no navigational panel, so that that means it's sometimes inconvenient, because each time you have to go up mini buffer, then go up again, then you see the total of、um, table of contents. You know the way Emacs is is laid out. The design is that you know. On the table of content on the home page, you have table of contents of the main chapters. Then you have, then you have table of contents of each subsections. Okay. You see, then there's a lot. So anyway, the home page is you know the entry point for everything. Very logical, simple, and classic design. But now, if you are working on JavaScript. Let's try JavaScript. It's kind of confusing. Each website is very different, and the problem is that this. Um, let's stop this. The problem, the navigation panel is kind of convenient, but it's the problem is that it's just there's no proper expectation. You don't know what they are until you use this website. For like several days, so for a week, you know, then you you become familiar on this particular website what the navigational panel is for, you know, are they just table of contents or are they kind of related topics to this page or are they subsections 
of a topic that this page is part of. You know, there's no way to know. I mean, each site is different. So let's turn on JavaScript. And also, the JavaScript is an issue. The implementation of a particular design is a very, um, it's a major issue because JavaScript cannot do it actually. So, um, so let me let's go to uh, objects. So now I want to find booleans, for example, Java JavaScript booleans. Okay. So you can see on W three school, the left panel is basically table of contents. Okay. Yeah, so the on JavaScript school, which is not which is not a good JavaScript reference at all. Usually it's incorrect and you know they they cater to the beginners, to people who don't know what programming they never done programming before. They don't know what's a variable, they don't you know, they don't know any they don't have experience. So the W three school is for those people, which is ninety ninety percent of all people looking for JavaScript. So that's why they are super popular. You know, they don't know things. Uh, in particular, the Zoomers. So anyway, for them, the left panel is table of contents. Now let's look at Mozilla. Now Mozilla reference is more advanced for the hacker types. So if you look at, you know, the, their Boolean page, the left panel is about, is basically the technical detail, the, the technical organization of the Boolean concept in JavaScript the language. In other words, in JavaScript the language, a Boolean is an object, you know, and uh, it has instance methods, you know, then it has examples and it has spec. Very confusing, you know, so we, if you look at the W3 school, you can you know, after we look at this for for five minutes, we can see how it is organized. You see, so JavaScript tutorial, then you have JavaScript versions, then JavaScript objects, basically different topics. Okay, then you have just Java, JavaScript functions, classes, async. Um, you know, and JavaScript browser, boom. JavaScript web APIs, you know, it's kind of messy, very messy, because this way they organize things. It's not, it's not in some uh, hierarchy. It's not in some standard hierarchy. It's rather just different related things they put together. So in other words, the way W3 school designed their side panel for the JavaScript at least, is that the side panel panel functions kind of as a table of contents plus convenience. So in other words, whoever looking at this page, what they would be interested in is likely to appear on the side panel. So for example, I'm looking at JavaScript booleans, then you might also jump to uh, web APIs, which is not part of JavaScript, the language, uh, then Ajax, which is kind of trick, you know, kind of several topics that's related to a particular thing you need to do. Then you have JSON, JavaScript JSON, which is actually part of JavaScript, the language, you know, then you have JavaScript versus jQuery, which is, <laughs> which is kind of essay, which is not a tutorial. Okay. It's just the opinion, opinion piece about different technologies, you know, JavaScript, then jQuery is a library, you know, not part of JavaScript language, not part of Doom, not part of browser. It's just a third party library, but very popular, you know, so you, they, they also put JavaScript versus jQuery query. And, you know, from a logical point of view, this is out of place because all the others are mostly about tutorials, but here, JavaScript versus J jQuery is kind of it's that's an essay that's an opinion. However, it is interested to those people looking at JavaScript. You know those people, especially the beginners, they would they want to know. They want to know what is, why should I use jQuery or should we use JavaScript? 
Then you have JavaScript graphics. You know that's kind of funny because in JavaScript language there's no graphics. Okay, so they they you see they list a bunch of JavaScript graphics libraries. You know, then you have Canvas, which which is part of DOM. You know, the part of standard uh, JavaScript. You know, then JavaScript examples. So, in short, the way W three school design their panel for JavaScript is that the panel is kind of convenient link table plus table of contents of JavaScript the language tutorial plus anything. People are, might be interested. Convenient jump place. Okay. Now Mozilla. Now let's now let's do a analysis on the Mozilla's side panel design. First of all, look, they are very different. You know, this the they are width. You know, it's very different. Um, there's a lot to talk about this, but anyway, let's let's focus on the se semantics of the side panel. So now we look at. The Mozilla's、um, JavaScript side panel. You see, so when you are on Boolean page, they show you a description. Okay, so this is subsection of the Boolean. So you jump to description section, then you have constructor section, then you have instance. So are they on the same page or not? That's another confusing point. You see, okay, so in this case, they are on the same page. So this. So in the Mozilla side panel, at least the top few, they are jump points to the current page. They don't go to another page. They are just jump points to subsections of the current page. Okay.、Uh, then you have specification section. Yeah, all the, on the same page. Okay. Then you have C also section on the same page too. So. In the C also section are kind of related topics you might be interested when you are reading about Boolean. Okay, so okay, so that's the top. So there it is. That's why they say in this article. So you see formatting very diverse things. You see, you see their formatting. So in this article, so this, so on the side panel, a subsection of the side panel is about in this article. John points to. Positions in this page. Then, um, then you have related topics. Then, then these these boxes. These boxes means a function. You know, they mean JavaScript object. You know, very confusing. So, related topic part topics standard building objects. Okay, then methods. Then inheritance. What the fuck? Okay, so okay, so now I get it. So, a Boolean object by the specification of JavaScript, the language, by the hierarchy of JavaScript technical detail, it is the standard building object of the Boolean world, and it has these methods, and、uh, it has a parent, which is this function. You know the word function. Then it has things called properties. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Then they're very confusing. You see this. So on so on the second part of the Mozilla's side panel, which they name related topics. So on this section, on this, let me can I select it. So on this section, uh, God, I cannot even select it. So you you see, it's very the side panel is just in general just so bad, I cannot even select it properly. So in this section, this the way they are organized. This are about the technical detail of JavaScript language, a hierarchy. Of the Boolean object, okay, all technical details, you know, properties, parents, methods, the object name, then then the prototype properties, you know, they don't, they are not, they are not very clear, okay. 
yeah, so now we start to get into the technical details of JavaScript, you know, uh, which is very confusing as well because you have the you have parent and child relationship, but you also have object and properties relationship. And these two relationships forms their own hierarchy. They are not related at all. So let me say that again. This is important aspect of JavaScript. Okay, let me show you, for, for example, you will see it, you know, read my tutorial if, okay, if you don't know JavaScript. So in JavaScript, you have objects. Object is, is the main thing, kind of, you have a, a sky of objects, you know. And each object has a parent and child relationship to other objects. Not all objects has a parent, but most building ones do. So you have a parent and child relationship. So a parent is another object, child is some other object. Um, right. So so and and so so parent and child forms a hierarchy, forms a tree, okay, of all the objects. But on the other hand, each object may have different several properties and the value of those properties is again an object okay so an object may have properties and the properties themselves are objects and those prop those objects you know can have properties again so this also forms a hierarchy okay but the parent child hierarchy and the object uh properties hierarchy they have nothing to do with each other. So you have this very messy, very unintuitive relations because at one time you think of parent and child as like a tree. Then sometimes you got confused, you, you got deceived thinking about the, the properties and you know the object and its uh, properties. So now if we go back and look at the Mozilla, you can see some of that. Let me explain, okay? Let me like let me explain to you about this Boolean object. Uh, uh, very complex. You see this Boolean keyword, that's a object, okay? That's an object. That object, what it does, it's a, it's actually a function. That it creates Boolean objects okay very confusing in other words it cre creates objects who are it creates objects that are boolean instances okay uh and you have methods okay now let me explain what the fuck is this very confusing you see you see it says boolean dot prototype dot two source okay what does that mean that means boolean has a property called prototype. Okay, so the Boolean thing, the Boolean keyword, the Boolean, you know, literal expression, B-O-O-L-E-A-N, that is object, okay, that is actually a function. Now that object has properties, okay, and one of the properties name is called prototype, okay. Remember, parent, child, and object, property they are two different things okay so now we are talking about property so boolean is an entity and it has a property called prototype and what is that that is object so you have a prop you have an object called boolean dot prototype okay the boolean thing has a property called prototype okay and what's the value of that thing that thing is an object which we just call boolean dot prototype Okay, now that object has a property called two source. Okay, a string property, and that pop the value of that property is again a object, and in this case it's a function. So that's why they call it methods. So you you kind of get what I'm saying. So then you see, okay, so this section is about properties. You see. Boolean and methods, and now they mention inheritance. Now this is about parent-child relationship. Okay, so the parent of the Boolean object is this 
object called function, literal expression, F-U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Okay, and, and that object, again, has properties. Ah, God, you know, so the way this, you know, this way, you know, this Mozilla side panel is very, very, very confusing. It's not friendly to beginners. Like, for beginners, they, they, they cannot figure this out after five years, <laughs> I'm telling you, because it took me several years, and I still get confused sometimes. For beginners, this is completely incomprehensible. But even for seasoned JavaScript programmers, let's say you code JavaScript at Google for three years, this is still confusing because the because they do not clearly show the two different type of hierarchies. Okay, one is parent child relationship, the other is object property relationship, and these two has nothing to do with each other. Okay, besides these two kind of hierarchy, you can you can use you know their relationship to to organize your panel. There's another, there's another, for example, you can organize them in a more practical sense where you don't talk about parent-child relationship and you don't talk about object property relationship, but rather you talk about, you talk about methods and properties. Okay, so this, this is actually more practical. So you can see they try to, they try to, indicate that a little bit by saying by having the title methods and properties so so the, so in the mozilla in the mozilla's you know side panel the first section is about jumping points to the current page then the second section is very confusing they try to you know there's some some of the parent child relationship you can see you know, in in the in the in the inheritance part, uh, where is it? Where does it say there? So part of it is parent-child relationship. Part of it is the object and properties relationship. Then another part of it is the practical issue of which is the methods, which which are the methods, which are the properties. <laughs> Like like non 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 functional non function properties meaning values, so do you guys know what I'm talking about? Maybe I'm losing audience on these techno technical JavaScript technical details. I don't know if I'm making sense to you guys. Uh, because you really need to know JavaScript in order to know what I'm talking about, and you need to know a lot of um. It, so yeah, the Mozilla. So the Mozilla's side panel to me is a complete failure. Complete failure, because you can you you have no good expectation of what what's going on here, you know. Not in the sense you know they don't have a clear indication of the parent-child relationship of the current page you are reading, and they don't have the good, you know, hierarchy of the object. And property relationship, it's kind of they, they mix them together, you know, a failure. So, okay, so that completes my analysis of the Mozilla's side panel, a complete fuck up. But from my experience, you know, I, I of course I write my JavaScript tutorial and I have referenced, you know, I have read a lot of Mozilla's, you know, and I just never, I almost never like. Not even once, when I, when I read a page on Mozilla, Mozilla, I use the side panel to go to find something else. Almost never. It, usually, I just completely ignore it. Okay. So that's so. In summary, the the situation of the side panel is a major problem on all websites. You know, there are ten thousand websites. You can you know try them yourself. Usually, it's just too confusing. Uh, and uh, let me show you the Microsoft PowerShell uh, side panel. It's also very confusing. Okay, 
Now I cannot give you a analysis of it without without having to give you a you know to talk about the technical details of the PowerShell. You know I have a PowerShell tutorial. You can just find it. Uh, just search for Xali PowerShell. So anyway, on the Microsoft side panel for PowerShell, it's also very confusing. Basically, they Again, it's a mix of few things. So on one hand, part of it is about about the technical hierarchy of PowerShell, the language organization, like PowerShell, the language, their concepts, you know, certain things are belong to certain libraries or core libraries or, you know, different modules, you know, so on one of that, part of that is that. You know they you know part of this side panel is about that, but part of it is about kind of convenience link to tutorial to to tutorials for example learning PowerShell here and install you know how do you install PowerShell and overview, so part of it is that. Very confusing. Okay, then 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 you have Microsoft PowerShell security. That's kind of another component component of PowerShell. So, yeah, anyway, that, so, so in summary, in summary, the side panel, the navigation panel, there's just no, uh, there's no standard way to do the side panel. So, so far, we have talked about the, the semantics issue of side panel, what should it be, you know, we, we, we talked about the classic Table of topics way, which is uh, you know uh, of Google Emacs Lisp. So side panel. So there's no standard. Um, uh, how do you say standard semantics for side panels? Side panel, what they should be. Um, other than just normal table of contents. And the other issue I haven't started to talk about is the, is kind of the design. I mean the actual format. As you can see right now, each one is very different. You know, they like each website is idiosyncratic. Um, and also, what happens if you click on one of them? You see now. Let me show you one of the very annoying thing. You see uh, on Microsoft PowerShell, if I click on a link. Okay, so some some of the link will jump you to it directly, but there's a there is a like regeneration, a very annoying. Like when I click on that, you'll see it flash. Okay, you see you'll see the side panel disappear for a second, for half a second, and reappear. It's like disorienting. Okay, so if I click some of the link, some of the link, if you click on that, it expand. Okay. So click on that. Now if I click on this one, it's gonna flash. It's gonna disappear and regenerate. Very disorienting. Okay, that's one of the major problems across all sites. Now let's try the W3, uh, W3 school. I believe that also happens. Yeah, let's try. Okay, they did it. Uh, they fixed it. Okay, let's see. Yeah, they, you, you kind of see the flash, you see? Basically, when you jump to a different topic, the flash happens, you see? Now I click on that, you see? Check. You see? It flashes, you see? It flashes, then your your current cursor position become relocated. I mean, you see that, you see we click on that, but that moved moved uh, to somewhere else. Let me try again. So I'm gonna click on this. After I click, you know, I'm gonna click this topic, uh, Ajax XML HTTP, okay? After I click on that, you know, that link is, is gonna move to somewhere else. Now watch. You see, it moved to the bottom. So that is very annoying. That that is a super annoying thing. 
so that um and let's go to Mozilla. Let's see if that happens on Mozilla. So let's click on the function dot link. Easy, it also happens. Ah, oh, God. So that concludes, I think that concludes my discussion, my analysis of the side panel thing, you know, because I've been, I've been thinking about this in the past 10 years. Every, every three years I spend a week on this uh, and it's just all bad, it, it's just all bad. So sometimes I have been thinking, you know, just get rid of the side panel at all. You know, on my website, on my website now let me show you let me demo okay let me demo my website you see they stick you see you don't get the jump fuck okay you see doesn't matter where you click you know they they the topic sticks okay no flash no minimum flash and no javascript required okay you don't need javascript uh you don't need javascript okay but if you don't have JavaScript, you don't have the highlight. Yeah, that's the problem. So, but anyway, so still this is not uh, very satisfactory to me. So sometimes I thought about just remove the side panel, but that that kind of uh, introduce inconvenience because it's pre it's really incon inconvenient every time you have to go up you know to the table of contents for example if you are you know reading my javascript tutorial you can see how to learn javascript after you finish reading this you want to know javascript basics you know right here javascript basics then you know after you read this you go to the top you can click on operators you know that's kind of the logical next uh, thing you want to read then true and false this is about javascript booleans uh, and branch control you know but if you don't if i don't have the side panel what do you do you that means you go up to one page then you list all the all the topics you know um not convenient so so that almost that that concludes my analysis my story about the side panel design but let me tell you one more thing okay let's go to html let's go to um frames all this problem all this problem was solved 20 years ago okay let me show you um Okay, the thing you are looking at is called HTML frame set. It was popular in year 2000s. Okay, it, it was popular throughout up to maybe year uh, 2010 until the HTML5, the HTML5 scum came up. It killed it. Okay. HTML and Google killed it. Google says this is no good. The, and all the web gurus, you know, the design gurus, they are on Hacker News, you see every day. They tell you what to do. They tell you, oh, this is a new theme. This is new design. Oh, this is flat, new metro design. No flat, new flat, flat design. New dark theme, good for your eyes, whatever crap they, you know. For the past 20 years the design gurus they work at google they work at facebook or you know twitter or you know like they are the big guys they you know they tell you what to do they talk and and all the people you guys idiot got convinced that, you know happened for 20 years 20 years so 20 years ago we have this technology called html frames okay and it works perfectly you see I have a side panel, I can control, I can adjust the size, you see? And I also, I can also have a bottom panel, I can adjust the size. And I can, I can click uh, to change, you know, whichever topic I want to see. And you will not see flash, 
you know you will not see none of it okay and you can you you can also have highlight okay so so right now you are looking at my my tutorial about html frame set okay this is getting obsolete because they you know and you can also nest it you see <laughs> let me show you this funny thing um and uh how can I get out? Yeah. Oh yeah, so you can click on that to get out. So this technology is there and it's widely used too. Let me show you. Um, You know it's wide, widely used by uh, Java okay let's see there it is okay you know Java is a giant language and you can see you know Java is a giant language OOP uh, object oriented language so you can see they are using frames HTML frames you know this is 20 years ago back in year 2000 1999 or so so you have frames you don't have the jump problem so you see the top panel allows you to choose what second panel is gonna be you see no flashing no jump you know and instant okay and no no you don't require you know no need javascript you see i have javascript turned off and the second panel allows you to choose you know a topic to show on the main frame okay that's called html frames that's part of html4 you know and it's widely used then sometimes around 2005 the google the google scum they say oh frame is no good because it fucks up their search engine okay that's what i don't i don't think that's true but that's what they say and they sold the idea to all the idiots, all the to, to to the masses, to the programmers. So every every web design guru, you know, if you are in web dev, you know, you will tell your friends. Oh, whenever people mention frame, you you gonna tell them. Oh, I, uh, I uh, frame is not good because blah 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 because oh it it's not you know it violates some usability principle. It violates some disabled person principle or something something like they are, they always have reasons you know this web guru design crap so this technology got killed by html5 you know what's html5 html5 came from these people uh basically uh the opera browser and apple and then google they killed it because they 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 want push HTML in a direction that benefits them, which is which is commercialization and search engines and all the crap. So, for example, Apple pushed for Canvas, so that they can you know they ha they, they can have have games on their phone instead of instead of relying on the on the Flash you know on the F Adobe Flash technology the Marco Media. So Apple pushed their things and Google pushed their things. So so anyway, HTML5 killed this frame technology from HTML4 because HTML5 do not support it. In HTML5, they say this is obsolete. Then all the idiots, the, you know, the uh, hacker, you know, this propaganda, you know, this giant, basically that's the way I um you know i'm getting old so that's the way i start to to see things this way lots of things you know as a programmer you know because i've been in the industry for you know 20 or 30 years depending on how you count so lots of the things you follow all the libraries or the practice are partly to some significant degree they are what the top people wanted you to see uh they they kind of yeah bec and the way they do that is be is by massive 
you know, you can call it propaganda, you know, massive spread of information. You know, they have money, they have resources, they can put into ads or, or, or to pay some writers to write about it. So that's what you know, that's what you think is good. So what you think is good <laughs> is very questionable. And one of the latest thing is that for the past five years is that people, Google has been pushing HTTPS and lots of you guys are asking me every day, hey, Sa, why don't you have HTTPS? Oh my God, why is your web page not secure? Which is a criminal, you know, it's a, Google is doing that. Why they want to do that? So that, so that they can have control. They can have control, like centralized control. So that it's already almost, you know, very much centralized, you know, like today you have Google, Facebook, Twitter, Amazon, eBay, PayPal, you know, the whole web, you know, I talked about this many times, you know, the entire internet is basically like 10, 20 major websites people visit, all the rest people don't re visit. So it's centralized. So why, why Google is pushing HTTPS? So they can centralize, they can control, then they can say which website they support. You know, if you are follow. You know, if you are no more people, they let you live. Okay, if you are like me, you know, you say if you you have opinions that they do not approve, they kick you out. Like my website, like my website right now, for example, sadi.org. Okay, it's not too big here. You see, you see that lock sign with a cross on the phone. You you just say, this website is unsafe or unsecure, something like that. Okay, that's a, that's that's you know, and to the vast majority of people, they have no idea what HTTPS means. They just know all they know is that oh, this website is not safe. Oh my God, I'm not going to use this site anymore. <laughs> So that's a way Google Drive control information. So, so for me, you, you know, so so I can. So what I have to do is I either pay, you know, fifty dollars to get a cert, or there's a free cert organization. You know, you know, you guys love it. Free software, open source, free cert. But who pays the free cert? You know. I haven't looked into, but yeah, the answer is not good. Okay. Okay, that's it for me. I think that's it for today. I talked for close to two hours. So anything else, anything uh, you guys have to say? So I kind of rambled for an hour on the web panel design. Uh, okay, and so that becomes the main topic of today, website panel design. And actually, I have quite a lot of other things I need to do, which I haven't done yet. I was going to show you. Okay, another day then. Okay. So we shut down in five minutes. Any comments? Okay, so here is another thing. Bye, Nugu, Nugu Naga. So now this is done. Uh, there's no delete key. There's no delete key on this keyboard. You know, in order to press delete, you have to press function, function, yeah, function M. 
you see so that's why I don't like 60% keyboards and in this application often view you have to you need a delete key to delete the image I'm not sure there's a different uh, key binding you see delete file of course you you might create a key binding but it's a problem so okay can function and end for delete okay so that's another thing I need to do xsync emacs package okay back to emacs um, not here go to start to do think uh, delete that okay that is done function m to delete then okay delete that those are my notes kind of And Mozilla screenshot. Okay, so yeah, this this article is about uh, user interface design. Yeah, another user interface design. So let me show you Mozilla button. Yeah, let's do a screenshot. Okay, so let me show you what that page is. So you go to ksali.info, then you scroll down then you go to CSS sucks so this section is all about user interface design then you go to Mozilla okay Firefox one of the most idiotic in the past 10 years they they become worse and worse in general following the industry uh, worse and worse user design and uh, remember look at this skeleton screen this you you probably have seen this it began around 2018 okay uh so what i want to now let's yeah let's go to mozilla web design so the page i want to do is Uh, UI design peep show windows gray text on white background idiotic skeleton screen the most idiotic disappearing button UI so here so Mozilla the Firefox around 2012 10 years ago you know they disappeared the back button like when the back button is not available they disappear it so that when you browse the web you know you you'll see your user interface jiggles around that's a so let me I, so so i wrote an article about that so this is a very bad user interface design when you have a user interface a control panel for example knobs to you know control panel you don't want the user interface element to jump about every time you do things or scroll you know your buttons change position you don't want that okay so Firefox did this you know in 2012 you know what extreme idiot you know back so back then I looked into you know uh, in around 2012 there are still blog writers you know today it become blog writers disappeared almost entirely except me you know a few people you know mostly you read Twitter and Facebook you know the propaganda information they made it that way you know you, you don't know if you are a Malaysian or Zuma you, you don't know but they made it this way so you grew up that way you know 10 years ago there are people who write blogs which is you know a lot of people you know so actually you have different point of view independent point of view but it's good 
So anyway, in 2012, Mozilla, they have guy, they have design gurus. They tell you what to do. You know, they, they, they explain, oh, why, you know, why, why this is a great design kind, kind of, you know. And they came up with this. I remember because I, you know, during that time I read, you know, these gurus, you know, on Hacker News, you know, every time they post to Hacker News or Reddit, you know, you will see a lot of people following them. So I look at uh, at what they say, um, and up, so apparently they are, you know, they some, they they have status, you know, among the programmers or design design community. They, you know, they are they are somewhat famous, you know, and they tell you and uh, apparently the guy works at Mozilla. They tell you, you know, the design and should be this or that way. But it's it's really it's the it's the worst, you know. So this is one example. Skeleton screen is another example. I don't know how, I don't know the exact origin of skeleton screen. Uh, I think it's from. Let's see. Yeah, they, you know one of these gurus. See, Luke W. I you know. Hold on a second. Let me read. I don't want to be mistaken. So you have this Luke Wabowski guy. Luke W is an internationally recognized digital product leader. Digital product leader, yeah. That word is popular about 10 years ago. Digital product leader who has designed and built software used by billions of people worldwide. Luke is currently a product director at Google. Earlier he was a CEO and so on, okay? Now, who, you know, I want, yeah, origin, okay, yeah. So this is my story, you know. Where does this fucking scum, idiotic user inter interface practice came from? Like I said before, it, it, it came from design gurus, okay, like big name design gurus and gurus. Here's an example. You see, the origin of the skeleton screen is from this guy. Duke W fuck. Okay. I'm gonna I'm going to tell you right now. This guy is an idiot. You know, he he work at Google, you know. How can he be an idiot if he work at Google, you know, and all the big you know design used by billions of people? Um you know, I don't know this guy in detail. I yeah. All I know is about is is uh on this page. But you sh but what happens is that in these giant corporations, especially in the past ten uh, years, what makes you a leader or you know you 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 become a manager higher and higher rank, you know, is um, basically you follow orders, you play the game, you climb the ladder, you climb the ladder in a corporate. Uh, environment so you have to be nice to people you you know you 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 have to have good social skill and not offensive you know don't talk about things religion or politics uh you know you keep to yourself you know you you just be a community player and uh, but always but Make sure you always focus on your own interests and benefits. So you know it's like political situation. You establish friendship, you know, and also it's important. You know, you have to know which person is important. You know, you don't want to make friends with idiots, okay? With people, hacker types who will never get anywhere. Like many of you, <laughs> like us, okay, most of us. You want to make friends who are, you can see, they are going up. So that's what I think what happens. So all the managers, you know, it wasn't like that uh, 10 years ago at Google, but Google become corrupt, high, highly corrupt. So that's a game. You play the, you know, you play the power game to climb. Uh, and, you know, he came up with this, Incredible, you know. He 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 is just one of the example. 
benchmark capital, the chief design architect at Yahoo, lead user interface designer at eBay, and the senior interface designer at the NCSA, the birthplace of the first popular graphics browser. So why is he creating this skeleton screen? This is very bad, you know. You, you don't get to see what is there. Uh, and slower in general. Okay, so so the reason he says is that conventional wisdom tells us that when things are going to take a while, we should let people know. In most mobile applications that translates to adding progress bars or spinners when something is happening or loading, while the intentions behind these progress indications indicators are good, the end result can actually turn out to be bad. Blah, 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 blah. No con so what's the point? What's the point? It can be bad because the progress indicators by definition call attention to the fact that someone needs to wait. It's like watching the clock tick down. When you do, time seems to go slower. We learned this lesson the hard way on Polar when we experimented with using web viewers to load parts of your native application's interface. It's, you know, what he says is hard to read, you know, long sentences. What's your point? Web views are like little embedded web browsers that can fetch pages from a server and prevent present them within the app, but only after they are loaded. Okay, he's talking about the spinners. He's saying that spinners should be avoided. But but where did he say about the skeleton screen? Okay, probably maybe it's on web, his website. So where does he introduce skeleton screen? Okay, there. With skeleton screen, the focus is on content being loaded, not the fact that it's loading and the, and that's real progress. Yeah, so according to him, the reason he introduced, you know, the skeleton screen is that instead of seeing some kind of spinner to indicate the page is loading, he says, don't show the spinner, but instead show the skin, show the, show the skeleton, like, instead. Which is fucking the most fucking idiotic fuck. Because, you know, I don't know, you know, because right now, most websites, for example, YouTube, when you have this skeleton, it's actually slower. You know, I don't feel, you know, it before the skeleton, it was faster. I I feel faster or it, it probably measured faster, that for sure. Uh, but with the skeleton screen, they, 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 it becomes slower and feels slower. Like normally you would see the text already, but now you are seeing these gray boxes. Fucking, what the fucking fuck up. You know, I'm rambling all over today. I'm thinking of just deleting the video. So there are still nine people watching me. Um, okay, so anyway, I probably need to in, uh, add a screenshot about Okay, bye guys. I uh, um I want to say so the skeleton screen is one of the example. Quite a few other examples. Uh the other giant examples is the gray text on white background. You know, this happened earlier. This happened around 2010. 
great text on background. Then it became pervasive everywhere, where it becomes very hard to read. Great text on background. Then skeleton screen around 2018. Skeleton、uh, screen.、Uh, and other things. Okay. Then disappearing buttons. Okay. Okay. Bye.